Hey guys, welcome back to PBX How To's. This is part two for trunking. And what we're going to do is we're going to verify our circuit is good when we connected it to the carrier. We're also going to add our signaling group and we're going to add our trunk group. Now, there's some specific ways that you can add them because if you try adding one and not the other, it's going to bark at you. So I do it the quickest way. I go signaling group, trunk group, signaling group, and verify it's working. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test the board or the DS1 we just added, so 1v2. And you can see it's passing everything the primary tests that it needs to pass. The reason it's a boarding because this is a test circuit, a.k.a. it's a loopback jack that I have plugged in. But what it does is it gives you everything that you need to see passing for your circuit to be working. If there's a failure in any, any spot, you can look up that failure via the documentation. But essentially 138 is the very first one here that's the key one that's the signal it has to see a signal if that one fails nothing else is going to work um, so as long as that one works you're ready to go so this let's assume for a minute our circuit's good we've tested to the carrier we've done our handoff they've accepted it or i'm sorry i've accepted it from the carrier which means they close their stuff and we're good to go so what we need to do now is add our signaling group and add our trunk groups. Now remember, I always add my signaling group first. You can look up the documentation to see how it tells you, but basically the process is you administer a trunk group you know, to control all the operations of your trunks. So I'm going to add signaling group 1. It is an ISDM PRI. Uh, the primary D channel is the very last channel, and that's a tw that 24th channel on my board. Okay, so my board number is 001V2 and the last port, which is 24. Okay, and you can leave this as is, as it is right now, and say enter, and you're good to go. Because then I can add my trunk, and I'm going to say it's an ISDN trunk. I'm going to say this is trunk 1. I'm going to leave all that the same. I've already defined my tack in my dial plan, and the areas that you have to add something into a trunk group is your TAC, your service type, and obviously your ports. Okay, so my TAC, I've given it one. This is going to be a public network type trunk. And again, you can look up what types of options you can do, whether it's a call by call, which is CBC, a DMI MOS, I-800. You can look these up in your documentation and also verify it against what your carrier is giving you. But again, we're, we're, we're doing a video on typical ISDN public trunks that we get from our carriers, okay? So... Once I have that, I can go in here and decide whether or not I want to measure this trunk, which is for CMS purposes. Uh, I won't for at this time. You can send the name or send calling number. I do want to have that, so I want to be able to send that information out. And the format is public, and I'll show you how to do that later. But once you have that information in there, and, and here again, some service features. Again, depending on what the carrier's giving you, you may need to add some stuff in here, but I don't have to because I don't have any. And now we start with our ports. So I can go 01V201 and just go through. And usually what I put right here is I put, um, I put the trunk circuit ID, circuit, and the way I do that. You don't, and here's one thing. You don't have to put a signaling group right here. I just do it because it's a good habit. 001V202 uh, ID, we'll just say HCGS, blah, 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 blah. Oops, sorry, my bad. Uh, one zero zero one v two zero three, um, blah, 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 you know, acting like that's a circuit ID. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna add three here, but you add up to twenty three because your twenty fourth port is your signaling port. Okay, so you're not gonna add a twenty fourth one here. You're just gonna add one through twenty three, and always remember that when you're going down here. When you're on fifteen, just remember the next page. You add zero zero one v two sixteen and you go down to 23 and you stop. Now, if you have a second trunk group that you wanna add in, your 24th port on here is gonna be 001V301, right? Because you're using ISDM PRI. But since we're just doing a quick exercise, you add the three here. Now, I go back into my signaling group and I tell it <coughs> my trunk group for channel selection is one. You can also go up here for your TSCs, but you're not doing any TSCs because you're not you're not connecting this via DCS or anything like that. Um, but again, always double check your work, uh, cross-reference the documentation because that's why it's there to help um, and you're ready to go. Now, because this is my 
it's a loopback jack it's not a real circuit it's a test circuit if I was to go in and test sig 1 you're gonna see it passes the primary one but aborts the second the, the second and third test and fails the last one because it doesn't see a circuit so if I go stat sig 1 you're gonna see it's out of service now this is a great way to test when you're working with the carriers if there's a problem with your with your trunk because if this is out of service and it doesn't say up or in service um, it will say in service then you know for a fact that your trunk is not working and you need to get your carriers in line and check your framing and check all that because it's 99.99 percent of the time it's a framing issue either on their end or your end meaning configuration the other percent is it's a problem with the wiring between the phone company and you and that could be anywhere between any of the pops any of the COs um, water it could be a number of things right but this is where you see that the other place is to when you when you check your trunk you can see here it's out of service near end which is on my side and E stands for near end and this tells me that I have a problem at my side which because I have a loop jack plugged in here but typically your service state is going to say in service and idle waiting to take calls <coughs> excuse me so that's how you have set up your trunk uh, and your signaling group and you're ready to start making and taking calls and part of the call flow I'm going to show you is how to accept DIDs but I wanted to show you this I wanted to show you the DS1 the trunk group and the um, yeah, and the trunk group to make sure that you have everything set up for you to be able to take and make calls for your system. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm going to do another video on trunk group on incoming call routes on how to set your incoming call routes to the trunk group. And I'll keep that in this series here just for, you know, for ease of uh, ease of use. So uh, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye bye.